Hello everybody, I'm Storm here. Welcome back to Baldur's Gate 3. In the last episode, we took a long rest uh, and finally met the owlbear cub that we rescued from the goblin camp because we finally had a long rest night where we didn't have some other kind of event going on that kind of blocked that out. So we finally met the cub for the first time. I gave it some food, but it still isn't willing to stay with us just yet. So we'll keep an eye on that. Uh, came back, had uh, Shadow Hearts want to talk to us about how she ended up, you know, joining uh, the worship of Shar. So we kind of got a little bit more backstory on her. And then we were exploring the tower. We found some Suser Blooms, which we're currently carrying and you know, we're generating an anti-magic field. But we were able to use one of those to power the transporter devices in the tower. And so we are going to use those to jump around and see if there's anything else interesting in here that we can find. So let's get into it. Let's go ahead and ascend. Now, this is one, yeah, well, we've already been here. Let's ascend again. And this is another floor we've already been through. Just double checking to make sure that we haven't missed anything. Uh, breezy sandals, no. Checking all these vases just to make sure I didn't miss anything. Doesn't look like it. All right, let's ascend once again. Here's the room with the arcane cannons that we took out. All right, up again. I think this room is new. Mage's friend, Arcana plus one and religion plus one. Interesting. Not sure it's worth replacing any of this. Um, you know what? We'll give it the Shadow Heart. Cause why not? We have a button here. What does the button do? Strange place for a button, especially one that doesn't work. I think it may have worked. Hmm. Handwritten letter. Dearest Lenore, I'm not sure I should say this, but your last letter really worried me. Why in all hells would you tame a boulette? Just because you found it near Myrna's grave doesn't mean that that's a sign. I'm really worried about you, Lenore. A bullet is not a pet. Using it as a guardian is one thing, but you sound quite taken by it. I know you don't want to come back before you finish your research, but if you are feeling lonely, you know my door is always open. Lots of love and hugs, Amarith. P.S. It really warms my heart to hear that you put the autumn crocus flowers on Myrna's grave. I remember she liked to roll around in them. Even though she'd always sneeze after, she was such a soft, loyal dog. I wish there was more I could do. Ah, it's a dog's grave. 
Roads to Darkness. The Roads to Darkness, an epic tragedy about power, corruption, and loneliness. Prologue, a lonely road. Thunder and lightning, enter Sereth. Sereth, new sounds through damp and dark oppression break. Is it the foe, that foul and contemptuous heel? Or art thou friend, a rescue from my lonely wake? Come out of love for me, not love for blood and steel. And Teresa? Teresa, how would I know? How would I know, Sereth? It's been so long. What do I know of you and you of me? Sereth, wait. Do you hear that sound? Enter Amphius. Amphius says, what is, What's this? Those figures so familiar both, but you still seem so strange. Sereth, uh, it's Amphius. Uh, Risa, dear Amphius, what happened to your face? It's pale as death. Sereth, uh, your eyes are black as char. Amphius, and you, I saw your teeth. They're sharp as blades. And what is with this road so slick with blood? What happened here? What happened to us all? Exunt. End of prologue. Act 1. Ten years prior. The rest of the play tells a tale of three elven friends, their paths to power, and how, corrupted, mad, and lonely, they killed each other. I see. Sounds very Shakespearean. Uh, a map's memoirs. My life, was, my life has been a long succession of pleasures. To see my town take to my ideas and cease legal discrimination of local orcs. To see my fights against horrid living conditions in city factories take off. To have the chance to see a new generation take to these ideas of a better, kinder, fairer, intelligent world and run with it to new regions of the continent. It was not a life without struggle, however, and I shall regret its failures. My old friend Suelto comes to mind, who adopted such cruel ideologies later in life. I will forever console myself with the idea that such a brilliant mind would only conceive such theories under the strain of exile and the promise of reinstatement as she ultimately was. Okay. This is a candle keep. We've already looked at Scroll of Dark Vision. We'll take that. Uh, oral histories of Faerun, Gith, and Mind Flares. I think we've already looked at that. And we have an engraved Gith Yankee disc. The disc appears in your mind's eye. Lazel sees it too and considers the vision. Tiersu markings. Ancient. I recognize them, but I can't make sense. No. Wait. The texts are enciphered, but I've solved the pattern. It's a story. About... About Orpheus. Your head buzzes in concert with Lazelle's. But it hardly matters. Even without the connection, you'd recognize her discomfort. Uh, Tirsu, you said. What does that mean? Githyanki writing. Every word a wheel. Every letter is spoke. The most powerful texts are engraved in slate. Some so ancient, only the most erudite Gish can read them. And who's Orpheus? A traitor. A dead one. This text is heresy. I can hardly bear to read it, let alone speak it. Uh, tell me what it says. Very well. I will read it to you. The Prince of the Comet, Part 1. So it was that we were free from Geich shackles and turned our blades on each other. The heavens were shattered, and one great empire was divided in two. Gith traveled to the Hells to broker help for her people, her cause. Vlakith would have you believe Mother Gith proclaimed her our queen. Lies. Gith made no such proclamation. Vlakith seized the Empire against the Mother's wishes. But Gith had nurtured a son. Orpheus, Prince of the Comet, the true heir. He knew Vlakith's treachery. Orpheus rallied Gith's honor guard and declared the throne for himself. The War of the Comet had begun. Okay, then. Disregard this... this drivel. Gith declared Vlakith queen of the Empire, and her own son defied her. Orpheus would have ceded control to the Geich. 
Hmm. And if it's true, it sounds like Vlacketh betrayed Gith and seized the throne. She did nothing of the sort. Thank your good fortunes, I'm a tolerant woman. Or I'd have sliced off a few toes for suggesting it. All right. We'll, uh... We'll take that. Such a strange disc. Key markings. Lazelle might know. We we already talked to her about it. Yep, that's basically what she just told us. And you know what, Lazelle? You can hang on to that. Anything else interesting in here? There was that button. Ugh, turn on a light. The Illustrated Adventures of, Bald of Baldoran. All right. This book is packed full of tales of adventure. The monsters are ferocious, the men are muscled, the women are buxom, and the clothing is easily torn. Something is cleft in twain on every other page, although you do find a passage a little less bloody. I think we've read this one before. Yeah. yeah I think we've definitely read that one before. All right. Anything interesting in these rows of books? Nope. Ah. Lessons for Sensible Living 4, Cities and How to Survive Them. All right. The first page summarizes the contents. The remaining pages clumsily elaborate on them in great detail. One, on not going to cities. The simplest piece of advice for sensible folk is to avoid cities entirely. Two, on marketplaces. People often tell me, Harrington, my fleeces and turnips are worth more in a city market than the local village fair. Uh, fools. To them I say, your fleeces and turnips will be robbed long before you reach the market square, and you'll have only a few lumps and bruises to take home. 3. On taverns. All sensible folk enjoy draining a mug of locally produced ale in the company of their friends, but some of you may have heard tell of the extravagant taverns that populate the cities of the Sword Coast. If body names like the Blushing Mermaid and the Wizard Stave were not sufficient warning uh, of their impropriety... Let it be known that you will be robbed long before you finish your first tankard and will have only a few lumps and bruises for company. 4. On sewerage. Uh, but like you keep a pot by your bedside and cast out the leavings into a communal pit of a morn. Sensible and clean, cleanly behavior. Many cities have dispensed with such simple methods of hygienic living and instead waste the waste of the inhabitants uh, commingles and flows to the great channels beneath the very streets, a breeding ground for mucky creatures. 5. On becoming lost. Cities are far too large and you will become lost almost immediately. A fellow once told me that Baldur's Gate is actually three cities in one. An outer, inner, and upper. I believe he thought I'd be impressed, but I simply spat in his eye and sent him on his way. Harrington uh, Netheline. Oh, you got some opinions about cities. <laughs> Alright, well, I think we're probably done in here, unless there's... Ooh. The Careful Art of Tirsu Ciphers. Engraved disc of Githyanki origin containing a complex cipher that can decrypt ancient Gith dialects. A useful discovery if one should encounter such archaic writings. I wonder if that's just in case maybe you don't have Lazel in your party. 
Right on this torn out strip of paper is shaky and blotted with tears, making it very legible. The sun stretches on. I'm all alone. Please, you know, hold your hands for just a while. Alright, well, um... Yeah, we don't really need it, but we'll send it to Lazel anyway. Alright, continue to ascend. New sounds to the damp and dark oppression break. Is it the foe? The foul contemptuous heel. Ah. This is that uh, play that we were reading, yes? Or art thou, friend, a rescue from my lonely wake? Come out of love for me, not love for blood and sin. Command as you see fit, my lord, my leech. Don't get me wrong. I love poetry as much as an ex-wizard, but using it to command an automaton... Really, seems a bit self-indulgent to me. Let's say there is a light in every living thing it's crawling toward the surface to survive. In its wake, it tramples everything. We'll kill the rest so that the one can thrive. It looks like that was not the proper response. Very well. All right. Um, we have full initiative, though. So I if this is worth the cost. I am going to charge in here and here attack this thing. And put you in the anti-magic fields. Critical hit and dazed. Lightning breath. All right. Got to press on. Fall back, and we're gonna need to unload. I mean, absolutely unload. Shield of faith. What fools these mortals be! Hmm. Night to King Five. I'll fall back here. I am going to drop the flaming sphere right about there. Victory awaits. Hmm. No, we're gonna unload. Get on on this thing. My path be true. And divine smite. Level two. Hit it. Ah! 
And of course you miss both of them. Protection. Ooh, missile snaring. Yeah. Yeah, you, you just stay right there. Okay. You know what? Good hit. Allow me to demonstrate. Let's see. Options. A lot of daggers. Scorching ray. Chromatic orb. 55% chance. Time to strike. And try it again. There we go. Taking position. All right, close the distance over here. Survival is all that matters. Have to keep going. You come over here. Nope, I can't push you. Hmm, can I use you as an improvised weapon? Or can I throw you? Not sure exactly how useful that was. Give Lazel some bardic inspiration. Oh yeah, I forgot that thing can actually attack. And I can sit there and just absorb attacks. Missile snaring. Let's have you get up there, use advantage on... Let's not burn. We'll do the level two. Hopefully one of those will hit. A couple of them did. Excellent. I'm Fury. 
I am death. All right, Lazel. Magic weapon. Another fight. Let's go. Man, just cannot hit that thing. Nice guiding bolt. See if we can get the chromatic orb. Good hit. Finally. Almost. I will ascend. And again. All right, crushed it. Make way. Misty step. No choice but to keep going. Can't slow down. All right, there we go. Can we, uh, can we dismiss it? And short rest, of course. If not over, then through. Let's see what all these animated armors have. Bernard. Potion of greater healing. Sounds good. Light of creation. It is a halberd. Ooh. Guiding light. Gives light evocation cantrip. Lovely. Anti key. A halberd, you say? Seven to twenty-one damage. One D ten plus five slashing plus one D six lightning. Overcharge. Chance to stun the wielder unless it is a construct. Ah, that makes it basically useless, doesn't it? Chance to stun the wielder. Hmm. Extra reach. I mean, I could try it. I'll send that ring to camp. We're not going to use it right now. Oh, 
way, we picked up a key. Oh, I don't know what the key is for. Am I encumbered? I am slightly encumbered. Oh, uh, Lazel, you can have these slight crossbows. Scrolls? Reception? Broken machinery. Ooh, thieves tools. Is there anywhere else to go? It doesn't seem so. Hatched parchment. The paper is torn and patched in many places as if it was well used but treasured. Wanted a small poem without a name. These empty sheets are all that's left of you. The last of all the thoughtless gifts you gave. I will hold on to them. It's all I can do. I can't throw them away. I've never been that brave. Okay. I got a key, but I'm not really sure what it's for. And the only thing I can do now is descend. Maybe I already bypassed whatever that was uh, going to be for. Well, there is one other thing, one thing that we can do before we continue on. That is, I want to head back to the Mycanid colony because we did pick up the items that we needed for Omelum. Lately. Yes. She is cataloging Koratoan fertility rituals. Alright. Oh. I greet you, child of the sun. How has your search for the mushrooms fared? We have a couple of bard questions we're gonna we can add. You've certainly got a lot more individual ambition than your kin. Why is that? I was born with a propensity for arcane magic my people despise. It gave me the strength to resist the elder brain. Every waking hour I pushed back against its dire hold. My wizardry empowered me. The moment its control shattered, I fled. Before the colony discovered, I had defected. So, are the tales of slavering, brain-lusting mind flares exaggerated? In the beginning, I had an arrangement with a lich. Excellent company, despite what one would expect. 
I required brains. He required souls. A perfect symbiosis. But our ambitions eventually splintered. I wished to better the world, and he preferred its rot. So I left his company, and thus I now feed from those who act against the society's goals. Hmm. Best yeah, way to deal with that sort of hunger, I suppose. Perhaps the peoples of the Underdark will be less inclined to violence if they comprehend the cost, yes? Alright, I found those mushrooms you're looking for. These are fine specimens. It will only take me a moment to brew them to proper potency. Omelium turns away to prepare the potion, lost in its own musings. You must drink the entire draught. I can make no promises as to its taste. All right. Down the hatch. The potion is disgusting beyond description. The only mercy is that it goes down quickly. Not a drop left. Very good. As the potion influences your mind, you may find yourself acting irrationally. Try and stay focused. The world loses its edges, its finer boundaries. You are fluid, but trapped like a creature suspended in amber. Ah, uh, let's see. Saving throws. Was a focus on the present and not the illusions. Oof. Terrible roll. Do I have inspiration rolls? I do. Try again. There we go. A few sparks and colors dance around Omeluum, but you stay steady and staring ahead. The tadpole spasms, seizes. It's fighting the potion even harder than you are. Fear pierces your mind like knives of ice. The parasite digs deeper, as if it means to hollow out your skull. Hmm. Wall off your mind from the psionic seizure? Drown out the table by focusing on a tune. I guess we could try that one. That's a 15 check. Two. Try again. Eight. And again, I'm gonna burn up all of my inspiration rolls. And not win any of them. A wave of psychic force batters your mind, cruel and calculating. You are nothing to it. You are small. The parasite swells with power. More power than you have ever felt before. It surges and twists, lashing out against that which would dare to intrude. <laughs> The parasite in your mind quiets, pleased with itself. Omeluum, are you well? That lava is like nothing I have ever observed before. Its power is unsettling. I felt it grow inside me. There's more power than ever. Such an outcome was not in my calculations. There is more to this being than mere stasis. Uh, so what's next? Cutting off my own head? Such crude destruction may not waylay a lava like this. But there is another possibility. I possess... A ring 
of mind shielding. It prevents elder brains from noticing my presence. It will not remove the lava, but it will limit its influence, both positive and negative. I would offer it as a gift, but in truth, the ring is priceless. Is there anything you could offer me in turn? Hmm. Perform the tale of your adventure so far? Um, no. How about I tell you more about the Nautiloid? Every last detail. A fascinating topic indeed. What can you tell me? Um, don't really get any bonuses either way. We'll try the intelligence, offer a detailed logical analysis of the Nautiloid. And I cleared it. What a brilliant experience. To feel one step closer to my ancestors is a fine gift indeed. Here, it is yours. May it serve you as well as it has served me. That thing better work. If it doesn't, I doubt you'll be in any position to complain. Of course, the lava remains. Be ever vigilant of its growth. I have never seen anything like it, Blur. It's my species evolving. All right. Oh yeah, we're a little, we're a little worse for wear. Ring of Mind Shielding Shelter. You have advantage on saving throws against Charmed. All right, I guess we can do that. Still not entirely sure that we want to use this particular weapon. I want to see it in combat, and how often does it actually stun me? All right, I think we'll go ahead and end the episode here. Um, I'm not sure what I'm going to do about this Suser Bloom. Probably don't really want to use it a lot. I mean, it might be useful, but the glowy effect is a bit annoying. How is your more personal research progressing? Not well. The nutrition my species receives from other minds is difficult to emulate. Alright, but yeah, we'll stop here and uh, we'll see if there are a few more places that we can poke around here in the Underdark when we come back. So for now, I hope you guys enjoyed it. Thanks for watching. Go ahead, like, subscribe, and comment, and I will see you next time.